Saga de la Plague, Volume 1. What is flavor? A distinctive flair and taste, a velvet emotion. It feels good. The only way to achieve true flavor is to balance your bad traits with your good ones. Flavor is a divine purpose. Flavor is Chef P. What's up, family? My name is Chef Flavor P, the chef of the heart, and I would love to welcome you to Saga Flavor Flavor, all right? I am a culinary entertainer, a rapper, and a painter. And if this one is time in my existence, nothing else brings you more joy than bringing all of my creative aspects together to bring you guys a highly unique culinary experience. You ready for a cook? Let's go. Now, I know you're probably wondering what comes first, the chicken or the egg. But in this case, it's this flavor. Sometimes I get the concept of an art piece I want to work on. You know, just being inspired by the everyday life and going to art shows is really my thing. Or sometimes I get inspired by a flavor concept I want to bring into life. And almost every time, it'd be the flow that steals a good night kiss. And this time won't be any different, all right? I'm going to bring to you guys something I like to call Umami Mami, okay? This serves as almost like my 2023 vision board. It's really going to express all the colors of Chef Flavor P, all right? I've been doing a lot of reflection and just getting to know the different pieces that make up Chef Flavor P. And it's helped me become more focused and clear on where I want to go. And as well, giving me the opportunity to pat myself on the back for how far I've come. I'm going to start with a couple of strokes. Uh, the different colors that make up me. Purple is my favorite. Red for the fire that lives in me. Green for the growth. The Montez. All of that. So I'm about to do my Bob Ross thing right now. And then I'm going to check in. I don't even want to tell you what the menu is yet because, of course, it's over the top. Of course, it's something that you ain't ever seen before because it's played game. So stay tuned. Now, one thing that stuck out to me, I thought maybe this is not once again, no reason, no rhyme, no way, I can just all be on the flavor and how I feel on this side. The whole piece that Trey style out of my album on it is a really nice, living heart. And I know that the song a little bit of what I'm trying to show you guys, because I have a very big, long, living heart. And some people might have a heart of gold. I think I got a heart of gold. I know I probably sound like I'm going to do myself, and I am, but I love her and I always strive to inspire people to be great, and I want to see everybody win. And I think it takes a lot of courage in knowing who you are, being one to see a better place that we live in, to keep up with the humanity of what I do. So I'm going to put a little bit of expression right here, just draw some diamonds. Draw some fire, but all of this is where I'm going to dedicate the sway to a shell flame to okay? I have an invest amount of drive. Um, 
to the point that sometimes it's scary because I feel like I'm not doing the best I can continue to beat myself up. And for the longest time, it took forever to learn how to family getting rest on top of all the other things that happened. Like the bed and the baby chair, being the TV chair, being the private chair, and going so hard and striving to be better and better every day. You know, sometimes you have to get to take care of yourself. And, you know, back in 2022, I had one of those times, you know, like a lot of projects going on, I was filming, doing things, and I was listening to my body. I was pretty bad, so you know, I had a lot going on. A lot of things that I made sure that I devoted all of you to take care of, but I devoted all of you to take care of that, not only take care of myself. And it led me to the hospital for like a week. And it was a point of time where that was the first time I sat down and I made it a point to commit, have this commitment to myself that it won't take me having nothing left to give myself before I give myself rest. So that also plays a big part of what this heart means. You know what I'm saying? Give all, give passion, give your all to the dreams that you set on fire. But to be real, you don't take care of yourself. What's the hard work for? So when made the flame do fire to the sun, like I know it will, I want to be there to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? And the other cool thing about being an artist, I can't draw, but it doesn't matter. You know, you have, I guess it's a mix between Basquiat, who's one of my uh, favorite artists. So he does a lot of symbolic type painting. I know a lot of that I get from him as well. I love abstract painting, I love graffiti type painting. So like the more expression that you get, it's so much um, expression you can get by the type of paint that you use, the strokes that you use, whether you're giving a different textile, as long as you know that Chip C, Flavor Peter Green, I got a double edge tray on this thing right now. So that's going to serve as the body of what I'm going to keep there so that I can have a standard plate for what we do to cook. So what I like to do to reset myself and rest, I like to create. It always serves as a sense of therapy, and I think that's why almost everything I do in life involves creativity. Painting, I live a very fast life. The chef scene is a very fast place. It's a high stress job. So I like to paint because it kind of brings down your levels for a little bit. And it allows me to navigate and calm more and stuff fast, fast, fast. I can really enjoy creating something without having a time restraint on it. So. Painting really does a lot for me as far as resting goes. I love to meditate. I love to sleep. I don't do it much, but I do love to sleep. But I think all of those are very essential to making sure that you can keep going so you can do great things and create more things that make you feel proud as an artist. So, yeah. This one right here has definitely changed my life. This one is rapping. I started. I started making flows up when I was like eight years old. I would sit in the library and like I remember Hot In Here by Nelly came out and like for every bar that he had in the song, I sat in the library and I made like a matching bar that kind of fit that cadence, but if I, I wish I could tell you what I said, but from then uh, to now, like expressing myself, rhyming, words, just being able to be at the flick of the wrist and at the flick of the tongue it has always been something that has brought me so much joy. And once again, therapeutic, I think that started when I was like, so I tell you, you know, like I was like 11th grade, and I'm not 11th grade, I was 11 years old. And um, I was bullied a little bit because I was different. I didn't even say my long hair. I had weave. I didn't. I was always getting picked on because I was different. I told you to do different things than what the other kids were doing. And one day I got tired of that and I went home and I wrote a diss track about everybody in class. And I went to class the next day and presented it. And they told on me. But from then on, I knew that my work had the power to influence. And I was very powerful with the way I could come up with mentally. And from that, I kind of just stuck. So, I oh man, shout out to being able to express yourself. It opened so many doors for me and it has helped me through the time where I felt like people don't even, can't even understand me because I was so different. And then the fact that I 
nurtured those abilities and now I'm bringing to a platform that people can accept and they want to understand me more. They want to know, like, let's see why you think like that and it's such a blessing. <laughs> All right, welcome back, family. Okay, so I done set the scene. This is the basis, the flavor piece of my piece, umami, mommy. Okay, so let's get into umami. All right, it's the fifth sense of the flavor. You got sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. And then you have umami. Umami literally means the essence of deliciousness. Okay, so it takes over the whole pattern where sweet, salty. Usually it's sensitive to different parts of the tongue. Umami overloads your flavor taste buds, okay? And that's what I love about it. You get the umami notes from things like vinegar that have things that have a lot of acid, mushroom, red meat, pork, ranch to be centered, um, having a umami note as well. So this is what we're gonna do, okay? I'm gonna do a caramelized filet mignon. I have a little chocolate and truffle oyster mushroom that's going to pair with it and some purple potato crisp. I also pickled some Brussels sprouts and I changed the color on them to go with the aesthetic of what we have on the board. All of these things are giving umami as well as hitting sweet and savory because once again, going back into the reflection of Chef P, that's what I want. A little bit of everything, but you can't necessarily put me in a box. And basically, that's what umami means in the culinary world. So, right now, I have my base. So this is going to be the fun part of it. Taking all the traces off right like, here and seeing what kind of pattern you form with that. One thing I love about creating and painting is it's never done until it's completely done. When I say a flavor piece is done, it's not done so well after we put the food on it, well after we enjoy it, well after the paint is dried up. It's a whole process. It's expensive, but it's so good. So I'm about to drop into this. And once again, like I said, I'm going to give you the caramelized brulee filet, the chocolate truffle with the mushrooms. I'm going to give you a pickle red Brussels sprout. Yeah. And then I'm going to finish it off with some purple potato cream. So when you see me again, it's time to set some shit on fire.
Okay, we're back. And right here we have this brulee filet about to go down right now, okay? So I lather with some of Roland's black truffle oil and just to top that off, and then I'm gonna come through with some more umami flavor because it has 21 spices from all over the world in it. Guess who that is? Who that is? It's Savor Dust, okay? The baddest seasoning in the land, by shell flavor pea. It has 21 spices from all over the world, from popcorn to pot roast. It gives any dish a new purpose, all right? So I have that going with the truffle, which is also a very, very prominent umami flavor note. And like I told you, red meat. So it's everywhere, baby, and we're going to keep it going. So I'm going to come through with this savor dust right here that you can get at MajorFlavorWorld.com for seven bucks for now, all right? I'm gonna come from the top. I already got my cast iron skillet over here. And I definitely made to make sure that I'm covering all of it, okay? No surface left behind. Yeah, man. Look at that. Like, the dust dances when you cook it with it. That's what I love about it. And it's low sodium, so you don't have to worry about overusing it. Savor dust ain't never gonna make nothing salty. It ain't gonna never make nothing nasty, okay? That's our promise to you. And so I'm making sure I'm getting full coverage on the protein. That truffle oil helped kind of like pack it on so that I can get that browning on the outside of these fillets when we cook them in this cast iron, which really gives you that umami flavor. At this point in time, I'm just becoming one, <laughs> you know? And then we're gonna come over here, cast iron on. Yeah, it's gonna be a nice press. Set that and forget that, okay? And then I'm definitely gonna do the two-part cooking method where I get a nice sear on here, and then I'm gonna finish it in the oven for a couple of minutes and then let it rest. You know you gotta let it rest, baby, like I told you about your body earlier. Everything the same, okay? Everything the same. Except that flavor and hair. <laughs> So the garlic herb residual butter that I got from the fillets that we are finishing off in the oven right now, I used it as a starter base for our chocolate truffle oyster mushrooms that I got going on right here. And if you can see, they have like a nice, like thick, but leafy kind of texture looking like type feel. And I think it's gonna go great as a topping on the brulee fillet. And here, Hershey's, okay, I told you it's gonna be chocolate truffle. So that's truffle, that's garlic butter, uh, that's green onion, that's savor dust. <laughs> Already, that's crazy. You let that reduce down, you already know how chocolate goes.
That is so good. I'm gonna let it reduce a little bit more. And man, this one time for the big show. I transition. Boom. Here it is. All right. So I have my 
purple potatoes for the crisp right here. I have my chocolate truffle oyster mushroom on top of my filet filet and my pickled Brussels sprouts right here. I told you that I'm just gonna bring it. I am so excited about these flavors right here. I was, you know, I was tasting that I, I was working. I was tasting that I was working and man, it's a flavor profile that is definitely distinguished and set apart from anything that you've ever tasted. It's getting sweet, it's getting salty, it's getting savory, we have sour. It takes over the whole palate. So what is that? Like I told you, it's my meal, okay? Let's wrap it up. Uh, 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 umami, mommy vibes. That's what I'm giving y'all. I say get into it. Matter of fact, let's get involved. I pickle some Brussels sprouts, then freak nick the colors, then brew laid for lays. This flavor is never subtle. Kaboom, chocolate mushroom shrooms with a spud crisp. What your mouth gonna give a chance past this? As far as the flavor piece is giving our vision board a reflection of Peter that I hope you all enjoy. Till next time, family. We out. I mean, it's, it's, that's P for your ass. Okay.